If you've seen my video, The Great Tribulation Depicted in Daniel Chapter 9, The Seventy Weeks, I talk about how we find telescope prophecy in Scripture, and you see an example of it there in Jeremiah 29 through 31, 32, 33, is a compressed array of prophecy that that ranges from the close of the Babylonian captivity to the restoration of Israel, some sort of tribulation shall go through, and then this glorious kingdom age. And it's hard to tell how close those events come together, what's already going on, what'll be, what time frames involved. That can be hard to tell sometimes. And um, in that video, I gave you an image, a picture drawn by Clarence Larkin that shows the concept of telescope prophecy. Here is Larkin's picture then, and I've added my own illustration here of the 70 weeks, and you can see the first 69 weeks on the left. Keep in mind this is at the end of the Babylonian captivity, and specifically from Artaxerxes' second decree. And it leads up to the time of Christ and his death on the cross, so I have Messiah cut off there. And then I put this picture in of AD 70 in. That judgment is foreseen by the prophets. And then we skip ahead over the church age there, and you see I put the 70th week there next to Larkin's drawing of the Antichrist, the 70th week, and then you have the advent of Messiah and the kingdom. And I put my own image in for the kingdom, and I'll show you why in a moment. I created a drawing also for the opposing position. But this shows telescoping between the close of the Babylonian captivity and the time that the kingdom will come to Israel. That's illustrated there. Here then is Larkin's picture, and I've overlaid the weeks to represent the view held by my opponents. This would be the typical covenant amillennial view. I want you to notice a couple things here. First of all, look at the weeks. I have the first 69 weeks going up, stopping at the cross, and then the 70th week is stacked on top there. And that is because when they interpret the prophecy of the 70 weeks, they interpret this last part of it in the following way. I'm going to give the text here colored so you can see what I mean. And what is in green here, they apply to the crucifixion. And then what's in red, they apply to AD 70. So the prophecy contains double coverage in their view. They have Gabriel outline the events up to Christ, then describe AD 70 for some reason. Then he comes back and describes Christ again. Then he goes forward and describes AD 70 again for, again, whatever reason. We don't know. So the covenant amillennial interpretation causes confusion here. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. This applies to the crucifixion. And that is correct. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. This applies to AD 70. And there too they are correct. But here's where they start to go wrong. This next part, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. 
Now, this they apply again to Christ and the crucifixion. This, however, is the Antichrist who puts a stop to sacrifice. That's a clear Antichrist theme in the book of Daniel, as I discussed in my video, why Daniel 9.27 must refer to the Antichrist and not Messiah. I suggest you watch that video. But they apply this to Christ, and in doing so, they have Gabriel jumping back in time to cover something he's already talked about. And then at the end of this, at the end here, cause a sacrifice and oblation to cease, that's Christ. Here again in the red, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Some of them apply this to Christ, I don't know, but you'll find they tend to apply this to AD 70 again. So Gabriel is jumping ahead again here. And just what does AD 70 have to do with anything in the covenant amillennial view? How does it answer Daniel's prayer? What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. They have the weeks come up, describe Christ's death for some reason. That doesn't answer Daniel's prayer. And then they describe the destruction of Jerusalem in 87. Well, how does that answer Daniel? How does any of this answer Daniel's prayer, this covenant on millennial interpretation? Now, you notice I put the illustration for the kingdom right from the cross through to the return of the Lord from heaven. And you'll notice a problem here with AD 70. Some of these covenant amillennialists think AD 70 was the Great Tribulation. Now, some of them answer this by saying, well, AD 70 was the Great Tribulation that was prophesied. But if you look at the illustration, I've put the kingdom in the background there from the cross through to the return of the Lord, they have the great tribulation now occurring during the kingdom age, and that's a contradiction. All prophecy that gives a chronology of events places the great tribulation prior to the kingdom. It comes right before the kingdom age. It's what's going on before the kingdom begins. The end of the Great Tribulation is when the Lord establishes the kingdom. This is always the case in Bible prophecy, everywhere. And to place the Great Tribulation 40 years into the kingdom age is a contradiction. And preterists need to answer this contradiction. They won't even acknowledge it. They don't have an answer and they want to pretend they don't even know about the problem. They won't even acknowledge it exists. And uh, please visit the website. I have all my resources there. All the pictures I've drawn I made available to you. And there's just other resources there you'll find interesting. And there's a place where you can donate to me and help my ministry. Please support my ministry through Patreon or PayPal. I prefer Patreon, though. Be, a, be one of my patrons. There's also a place at my site where you can send me email with questions or anything like that. Send me questions, uh, verses you want me to talk about, anything like that. Please do.